right, everyone. So this video is to replace the HP Pro Book. As you can see, the screen is shattered. Um, seems like someone actually stepped on it and um, it's not really working so good. So this is the Pro Book 640 G5. Um, so if you have one that's um, damaged, this is how we will go ahead and fix the screen. All right, so first and foremost, what you want to do, you want to make sure you take out your power um, and disconnect. And then you want to go ahead and power down this computer all the way. So if you can see, you'll see some lights right there. And then it disappears. So I do a what's called like a hard boot. Press and hold the power for a while until all the lights basically shut off um, from the system itself so that you don't have nothing running because with the HPs, most of the time when you're doing the screen repairs, um, you don't really have to do a lot of disconnect on the back end, so the battery itself is still connected. So that's one good thing to note because we're just gonna be operating right here. All right guys, so the first thing you wanna do um, after we power down, I like to go ahead and just for safety, I like to disconnect the, the battery on the surface just so that while we're operating the system doesn't try to turn itself on so these look like um, normally what i do i try to go ahead and disconnect the the battery before we operate because i don't like having um power connected to the system when we're working okay start off taking apart the bezel on the side so we'll have to work our way around also using the spudger um, this is fairly easy to pop out um, so like i said i always go with plastic okay. Apart from the pry. and then that's it so there you go. As you can see, there's some type of little glue that sits there, right? All right, now if you look at it for the screen itself, there's a couple of screws, right? There's a couple of screws that you'll need to take out to get the screen out of here itself. And then you'll need to turn it around to disconnect the, the, the cable. So the device. So I want to gently pull out so you'll see you have that separation. And then basically, there's always some glue that's holding it on top. So you just want to go ahead and pry off that top piece of glue or tape right here to remove it from. There you go. So you have that right there removed and then from here all you have to do is now remove the actual connector itself i normally like to use a smaller and there you go a smaller spudger lift up the corner and then you just push out and it releases it and that my friends is how you will disconnect and take out the screen now first thing you want to do we're going to go ahead and and connect the connecting cable. So 
Same way we took it out. Uh, instead of pressing on it, I just use sputter to make sure it lines up properly. Then we're just gonna go ahead and press down back so have it locked in. And then right there, tape goes back in. What you wanna do, you wanna go ahead and you're gonna try to level this back. It should fit in nice and perfect right there. At this time is where you want to make sure that that cable that came out down here, it sits back into the little slot it's seated because it's like, it comes out, that prevents the, the bezel from um, going back over it. So you want to make sure that cable right here is actually seated properly. It sits right above the, um, the cable. So just make sure that's all shall you see that this part easy steps go ahead and put back the screws in that you took out um, initially for the, the, the screen. Part where you want to go ahead and remove this plastic cover because the bezel that goes over this is going to trap the plastic um, back in and you don't really need that and now you can actually go ahead and put this back in to do is plug it back up and test to make sure that it works. So go ahead. Put power in. I see lights and I see HP. And there you go guys. That looks like a good looking screen to me. There we go. Now one key thing to note, normally when you do hardware updates, it's good to check the BIOS to make sure the BIOS doesn't need a firmware update. Um, sometimes with hardware, new installation, you want to also just give the bias a check and um, just to be on the short side, right? So that's always good best practices. Yeah.